In this video, I'm gonna show you how to replace your rear wheel bearing. This is for the non-ABS version, but the ABS one will be exactly the same. You'll just have to unplug a wire at the back. Let's get started. Use a 21 millimeter socket and take off all five of your lug nuts so we can take the wheel off. Now you have a couple different options for removing this drum. As you can see, mine is seized on here. So what you can try is to hit it with a hammer in this area. Just make sure you don't hit the lug studs because then you'll damage the threads and that should break it free from the hub. I'm going to give that a try, but if it doesn't work or if you don't want to do it that way, you also have two eight by 125 threaded bolt holes here in which you can put two bolts and as you tighten those, it will actually push the drum off and break it free. Looks like we'll have to go the route of two bolts. Spray some rust penetrant in here to help break things free. I'm going to quickly put a lug nut on here so that in case this pops off and wants to come flying, it can't hit me. Gently pry it from the back side. At this point, all that's holding us up is the brake shoes. So just be gentle and walk it back and forth. In order to release the drum, you'll see that on the back side, there's a little rubber boot here that if we take off, we will have access to the adjuster. And if we turn it to contract the shoes and squeeze them together, then we'll be able to easily remove this drum. So pop that boot off, and then you can either use a screwdriver or a little pry bar, whatever you have. And there's gonna be an adjuster wheel here. You just have to get in there and adjust it. It looks kind of like a gear. In my case, I'm gonna have to spin up on it to release the shoes. Now back at the front, you can see the drum pulls off much easier. And this could have been part of our problem. This shoe was not attached anymore because the hardware is broken. So we're gonna address that issue. What I want to do next is spray brake parts cleaner all over this area so I can eliminate as much dust as possible. That way I don't breathe it in. From the back side, let's remove the four 12 millimeter bolts that hold this wheel bearing on. Now you can just take a hammer, tap the wheel bearing until it comes out. But of course, try to avoid hitting any of your brake components. I'm going to try to push it with an air hammer from the back side. So what I was just trying is to hammer on these bolts that I put in. These are not the original ones. There are other bolts that I had laying around because I don't wanna damage the original ones. But I was trying to air hammer on these to push the wheel bearing out, but it's not happening. So my next option is going to be to heat up this axle beam slash knuckle area right around where the bearing sits so I can hopefully break it free with heat. Since everything is separating, we're gonna have to remove this whole assembly off of here and get it out that way. The first thing that's holding us up is gonna be this brake line, unfortunately. So we have to break it free, whether it's here or at the brake hose further up the line, 
I'm gonna try over here. I'll try to set this back in temporarily. Got a 10 millimeter wrench, try to break this free. What you're looking for is the fitting to break free without spinning the line as well. <laughs> I put these two bolts back temporarily so I can hold it in place better. Let's try this again. Okay, so it is twisting the line. Nope, it broke free. Perfect. Keep in mind, brake fluid will leak at this point. So make sure you have a collection bucket to catch the fluid. I'm going to pinch this brake hose down very gently to limit the amount of fluid that comes out during this procedure. Don't crush it down completely. I have these special hose crimping pliers. Don't use regular pliers and completely crush it because you will damage it. Okay, take this line out. Now let's take out the bolts. Now you can pull this whole assembly off and it is still connected on the parking brake cable, but now we can move it around and get to the backside easier. Carefully and gently heat up right around the wheel bearing where it mounts onto this backing plate. Try not to direct the flame on the other side and also try to stay away from that parking brake cable. That way we don't damage anything. There we go. Now we need to clean off in here and I'm just gonna use a wire wheel. You can use wire brush, whatever you have to clean up that area. Rinse it off with brake parts cleaner. And let's apply some anti-seize on the inside here. as well as on the outside part. Let's put this backing shield back. Let's start this brake line back in. Okay, so that's bottomed out. I'm gonna come back to this once the wheel bearing is mounted because I want this to be secure so that I can actually tighten this line without it flopping around. So grab the wheel bearing and put it through. All the way. There isn't much to see on the front side, which is why I'm showing you the back side, because at least here you can see how it needs to line up. Start in all of your bolts by hand. You don't want to cross thread any of these. torque for this is 45 foot-pounds. You'll notice that when I tightened it, I went in a cross pattern, and I'm gonna do the same when torquing it. That way the wheel bearing and the backing plate can seat themselves 100% even. 45 foot-pounds. Let's finish tightening down this line. Make sure it's nice and snug. And then we'll grab an eight millimeter wrench and open up that bleeder screw. Work it back and forth. And with the clamp removed off of the brake hose, we should see brake fluid coming out of here any minute. If no brake fluid comes out, that means the bleeder screw is clogged. Of course, as I say that, brake fluid comes out, so I know mine is not. I'm gonna give it a minute and then we can perform a full manual brake bleed. Since we had the brake system disconnected, it's very important to do that. That consists of having someone in the vehicle pumping the brake pedal with this closed, of course. And then once the brake pedal has been pumped a few times, have them hold pressure, open this bleeder screw, 
fluid will come out, potentially some air, once the pedal has reached the floor. Close this up, pump up the brake pedal, and repeat the steps a few times until no more air comes out. And then of course you'd want to check your master cylinder to make sure it's full. So far, my gravity bleed is proving to be successful because I am not getting any more air bubbles out of the system. So I can close this off and perform my manual brake bleed. Once you're done, clean everything off so that you don't have brake fluid residue here and confuse it for a potential leak. With everything back together, we can now put back this cover, the rubber cover that covers up the adjuster. If you need to readjust later, just remove this. Now let's coat the hub in some anti-seize. That way the drum doesn't seize on here and this will prevent rust from building up. A thin layer will do. You don't have to put a lot on. Make sure you go around this inner ridge here. Try not to get it onto the lug studs or the threads of the lug studs. Those should stay dry. Install the drum. Now we do have to adjust it because we touched the adjuster so it's not exactly how it was before. To get the best result at this point, you wanna pull on the handbrake a couple times. That'll situate the shoes. Maybe hit the brake pedal once or twice. I already did that and as you can see, this spins freely. You do want a little bit of drag when it comes to drum brakes, so we're gonna take this back off and adjust the adjuster to expand the shoes just a little bit. So grab your screwdriver or pry bar, whatever you're using. And in my case, I actually have to spin this up. I'm only gonna turn it a few turns, put the drum back on. Pulled on the handbrake again. And as you can see, this now spins. And when I put the wheel on, I want this to spin freely about one turn. So let's test that out. I'm just going to put one lug nut on to hold the wheel. I know the wheel is wobbly, but this is actually perfect. It spins about one turn with, with medium force when I spin it. There we go, perfectly adjusted. Now these will self-adjust as you drive, so if you're worried that it's a little bit under-adjusted, you can either go from the backside or you can just pull on the parking brake while you're in reverse. Do that in a safe area, such as an empty parking lot, of course, and that will self-adjust the shoes in here to the perfect width. And there you have it. Let's put the wheel on. Put on all five of your lug nuts, bottom them out, and torque them to 76 foot-pounds. Double check them. Okay. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.